I've been sitting here thinking, me and my brother have been brainstorming a little bit. I had a little idea. So there's been a fit, there's a lot of invasive species in the United States that have come in from Asia and all parts of the world, right? Some guy has like a really cool exotic aquarium and he happens to let some of the fish out into the local pond. And before you know it, the whole state has an invasion of foreign species of fish, right? Like snakehead here in Maryland where I live. So that was a big deal. 10 years ago I guess it is now and uh, we routinely go out and catch them on the Potomac River now so no big deal. In Florida there is a really beautiful invasive fish from Thailand or Vietnam or something like that and it's called the clown featherback. It's a really aesthetically beautiful fish. It's got a, a eel like back fin so it's just one continuous fin like a ribbon tail and it's got some really cool symmetrical dots on the back. It's a real silver and purplish type fish. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a bait fish because it gets a little bit bigger than that, but I'm sure it has some sort of prey down there in South Florida. But what we're going to do today is paint some bait, some blank bodies, some crankbaits in that color scheme, like the clown featherback fish. Let's paint some sauce, guys. All right, guys, so one of the first most important steps when I'm painting is having my area ready to paint, okay? It sounds very, like, uh, common sense, yes, but a lot of guys do not keep this in mind, and then they have a hard time organizing and getting this done in, in an efficient, quick manner, okay? First, it's essential that you have a working, efficient paint brush or airbrush, okay? This is a Badger Patriot 105 short cup, meaning it has a very short, stout uh, cup. I don't really use a lot of paint unless you're painting a lot of bait. I mean a lot of baits, okay, hundreds. You don't need a tall, wide cup like most of the standard brushes you're gonna find on the market. They're just more of a mess and you don't need to be cleaning, you need to be painting. So, first, then you need to have paper towels. They will be your best friend in this process cleaning up your cup. So paper towels and a clean airbrush and some good paint. The paints I work with, guys, they are available for you guys to purchase as well. They're not too expensive, depending on which brand. Uh, I'll go through them real quick. The US Art Supply Paint, Amazon, Testor's Paint, Amazon, and Createx Wicked Colors, Amazon as well. This is sort of middle of the road price. The Testor's is very high end price. And then the US Art Supply is gonna be your really affordable lower end price, okay? So just to walk you through the paints I use, Obviously the highest price, the test doors, is going to be the one that shoots the best straight out of the bottle. And that's going to save you a lot of time. And if you guys are painting a lot of baits and you want to be quick and efficient like I do, you need to be using high-end paint. So that's going to cost you just a heads up. Now we're going to get into the process. Like I said, you want a working airbrush, good paint, paper towels, and some water or a mixture of Windex and water that you're going to douse on those paper towels in between colors to clean out the cup. All right, so now that we've done pretty much most of the prep, we've got the tape on the bill to prevent from excess paint there. The final step before we actually get painting is denatured alcohol on the body of this plastic just to get off any impurities, uh, any of the rough surface. If you see anything going on with these bodies, because I order mine from China, they don't always come perfect. You might have to do a little pre-work, some light, light sanding. That's about it though, okay? And then always have a heat gun or a, uh, an air, air dryer. Hair dryer, I said air dryer, hair dryer, durr, when you wanna heat it up. We're gonna be doing that between every paint coat. It's called heat setting. and That ensures that the paint gets dried to the body and that you don't touch it and smear it when you set it down or otherwise. So we're gonna utilize this glove, like I said, for uh, to gauge the, the water content in the paint and the pressure. Make sure that's shooting nice and smooth. All right. And then we're just gonna really apply a generous coat of this white pearl all over. So there you go, very heavy and generous white pearl base coat. Go crazy on it. See that? And it's very subtle. That tester's white pearl is a very good color. Just like that, you've got your base. All right, so for our next step, we're putting that flesh in there. Do a pretty generous amount. 
And I love this paint because it really sprays well. You don't have to worry about it too much. You can use these cardboard. I put cardboard down and then I put a uh, paper towel over it, right? And uh, then I can spray on there and see the paint pressure as well. So you got tools, you got your glove and your paper towel. That just ensures you're getting perfect shots. Perfect strokes on these beats. We're gonna go with the flesh. We're gonna go on the shoulders here, upper shoulders. All right, be very deliberate with this. Go light first, work your way into it. That's all you need, all right? Nice and easy, finesse it. It's all about your angles. Every time you're spraying a bait, make sure your pressure's right. If your tip gets clogged with paint, make sure you're using a wire brush like this and getting that clean. Because if you're not and you overspray, game over. All right, so we're gonna turn that bait around and we're gonna get the same spot on the other side. All right, we're gonna hold it, look behind it, and that's how you're gonna gauge the symmetry on the bait, all right? You always want it to be symmetrical. That looks pretty good to me. Up on the upper shoulders, on each side, you want an even coating. That's it, all right, and then we're gonna heat set that too. All right, so next up, we've got another test source paint. It's a pearl silver. This is gonna show up a lot more than that pearl white base coat did, uh, but that's what we want. We want this to stand out a bit, and this is gonna be applied to the side of the bait, just under that flesh color. We're gonna apply the silver. We're gonna make sure that's shooting right because this thing comes out crazy fast. Woo. I did four strokes, all right? So we're gonna apply the same on the other side. As long as your pressure is right and you're shooting the same way, it should apply the paint the same way. Just like that, we're good to go. And we're ready for the next step. All right, so the next step, I just put in some pearl purple. You know, like Barney, all right? That color purple. We're gonna apply that to the lower belly on the sides. Hold it at the angle you need it. I like to hold it right there on the sides, and then I get to spray in real lightly, and then just work your way in. See that? It's coming in real well. You just go darker as you need. That's all we need for that side, really. You don't want too much, real subtle. Perfection. I do the same on the other side. it on that step. All right, so the next step, we put a opaque yellow Testor's paint in there. This is gonna really make the belly pop, and when you're deflecting a crankbait off the bottom, essentially most of the sides and the belly are gonna become visible for a split second, and that's when the fish is usually gonna commit to eating that bait. Uh, so that's why I like to put some brighter, more flamboyant colors on the bottom of the baits. You can kind of see I've got these guys going off with the same thing, uh, yellow. Something to key in on, that's the important part. Belly strip that we left blank. Right in line with those purple sides on the belly, right? Nice light yellow coat right there. Heavy on the tail, because that's what's gonna really catch their attention the most. And lighter as we go up. All right, so we're pretty we're pretty far through this process. It's not too difficult. I think uh, a, a rookie painter could do this paint job, no problem. Uh, this is the most complex part, which isn't even that hard to do, and I'll show you that in one sec. All right, so just for a very subtle effect that's gonna make this belly pop even more, we're gonna apply a fluorescent pink coat, and that's a very light, uh, accentuating type of color that just makes anything it's applied to pop even more, and that's what we want. Make sure that's shooting right, and then we're gonna apply that right over the purple. Seven strokes. Seven, and it's barely visible. You gotta really turn it around to see it. Um, and I want it just a little bit more visible than that. And then we've got just a little bit of pink. Just a little bit, barely noticeable, but the fish will see that. Last step is a couple of dots and then finishing up the back and we're done with this thing. All right, so next up I put the opaque black in there so that we can get this back strip done. I'll make that real quick and simple. Uh, you can see what's left blank there on this body, just the back and then the muzzle and the sides kind of. Uh, so we're gonna fill that in with this opaque black real quick. Just like that, nice and steady. 
Nice black back, a little bit on the muzzle. Enough to make the eyes look mean. And we're on to the last of the last steps. So next up, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be adding a very cool feature, and that's gonna be those dots that you see on the clown featherback fish that we're trying to duplicate here in, in a small way. Obviously, they're not like totally purple on the belly, nor do they have any yellow on them, but uh, you know, that's the beauty of painting. You can do whatever you want and modify bait. So we're gonna be doing some precise work real close in on the back here. So you can see that flesh strip we still have there, the flesh color. We're gonna add the dots sort of along that. And uh, this is a freestyle deal, so you can do like one on each side or two or three or uh, symmetrical dots or dots that are randomly placed. It really is up to you, it's your discretion. So do with it as you feel. I'm just gonna do whatever I'm feeling right now, which is sort of a row on each side. the outline and that's getting closer to what that feather back looks like doesn't have to be perfect whatever your artistic expression wants to be with those dots feel free let's add our next little add to this part which is a black dot on top of those white ones all right next we've got the black opaque paint back in the gun there just a little bit for the dot work make sure this is perfectly spraying perfect has to be a 10 out of 10 perfection sprayed on the glove make sure it's doing its thing I added, as you can see, another white dot on the sides because it just felt right. Do what you feel, always. And that's it, just a little black in the middle. And you're going to do that to every white dot on this body. And now you can see the clown feather back come to life. When that thing's shaking around, it's going to get some serious play. You dig? I know you guys like that. I love it. It's great. All right, last step. We're going to put a gold, a very slight gold powder coat on the back. It's a pearl gold. Um, and that's it. Literally just a light dust of that and this bait is complete. I'll show you that. like that warriors we have our own version of the clown featherback which is a really cool looking fish i hope you guys enjoyed this hit that like button hit that subscribe button thank you guys for joining me today on water warrior fishing i'll see you for the next one